hello guys um in this video we are going to continue solving the mathematics questions of the Harvard university that we started earlier so we are going to be doing exercise number two um for those who have not watched the solution to exercise four i'm going to drop the link to that video in the description so um, after this you can go and watch so exercise two solve the following differential equations showing each step of your work the first differential equation is dy by dx plus 2xy is equal to 0 given that y of 0 is equal to 1 and the second differential equation is y double prime plus 5y prime plus 6y is equal to 2 e u to the power negative x so pay kind attention to the solution so um, we move directly to the solutions of these problems beginning with the first one which is solving the first differential equation with those initial with, um, that initial condition that has been given so i'm going to highlight some basic things that we are going to do there are just two of them first we are going to solve for y in that differential equation and write it in the form y equals to f of x secondly we are now going to solve for f of x given those um, that initial condition that we refer to the problem as a Cauchy problem because it is a differential equation with an initial condition. Okay, so beginning with the first part that is solving for y and writing in the form y equals to f of x. This is a differential equation that that has been displayed to us, so we need to identify the suitable method to use. Now, it is firstly a first order differential equation, and secondly, it is a variable separable first order differential equation because we can separate the variables why am i saying so because if you write the differential equation in this form you can be able to group dy and y and then dx and x thus separating the variables since we can separate the variables we now integrate both sides of the differential equation that separating the variables permits us to integrate both sides of the differential equation integrating on um, the left hand side we get lean of the absolute value of y plus a constant of integration because it is an indefinite integral same thing goes to the right hand side from from the fundamental theorem of calculus integrating x you get x squared on so then since it's, it is an indefinite integral we attach the constant of integration now um subtracting one constant of integration on the on on both sides of the equation so group the two constants of integration together we get this and then um, letting d minus c to be k since it is also a constant we get that now taking exponentials on both sides we have the exponential of lean of the absolute value of y to give us the absolute value of y and on the right hand side we get the exponential of negative x squared plus k now the second part we are now going to solve for f of x given that initial condition now what does it mean for y of 0 to be 1 it means that when x is equal to 0 y is equal to 1 now we can use that condition to find the value of the constant k from this equation so it means replacing y with 1 and replacing x with 0 we get the lean of 1 to be 0 squared plus k now the lean of 1 is simply 0 so we get 0 to be equal to 0 squared plus k hence our k is equal to 0 from there we can rewrite our um, equation here as the absolute absolute value of y to be e raised to the power negative x squared plus 0 but negative x squared plus 0 is negative x squared so we get this now the definition of the absolute value of y is very important because in this question we are finding y and not the absolute value of y so the absolute value of y um, expressed or um, in function of y is y for y positive and negative y for y negative so from there we can rewrite this um, equation here as the absolute value of y that is replacing it with um, plus or minus y and dividing both sides by the plus or minus we get y to be plus or minus e raised to the power negative x squared plus k but since our initial condition which is for x equal to zero since our k is zero right we just have y to be plus or minus e raised to the power negative x squared now let's try to take um, our initial condition and fit to see if you are going to take the positive or the negative um, side of the exponential of negative x squared so our initial condition says when x is 0 y is 1 so fitting 0 here we get um, e raised to the power 0 which on this side you get plus or minus 1 but on the left hand side we are just going to get 1 so it means that 
for this equation to be true then we need to take the positive one only so from there it means y will just be equal to the positive of um, the exponential which is um, positive e raised to the power negative x squared and that is the particular solution to that Cauchy problem secondly we go to the second part of exercise 2 which is solving this differential equation it is a second order differential equation where I'm going to highlight the steps that we are going to follow in order to express y as a function of x so first we are going to solve for the complementary function we call it yc next we are going to solve for the particular integral we call it yp and lastly we are going to solve for the general solution we call it yg which is simply the sum of the complementary function and the particular integral so let's begin solving for the complementary function the complementary function will begin by looking at the auxiliary equation so i'm just going to let my parameter to be lambda and replacing it get lambda squared plus 5 lambda plus 6 is equal to 0 from there if we factor out lambda squared plus 5 lambda plus 6 is equal to 0 we are going to get lambda plus 2 times lambda plus 3 is equal to 0 we get the values of lambda as negative 3 and negative 2 we can now express the complementary function in its required form since the value of lambda um, is um, two unequal values which are real we now get the form which is yc to be a e raised to the power negative 3 x plus b e raised to the power negative 2 x and a and b are constants that is it belongs to the set of real numbers next we are now solving for the particular integral so i will just let my particular integral to be y p now the particular integral respects or it has the form it takes the exact form of the right hand side of my differential equation provided that exact form is not part of my particular or uh, of my complementary function so basically here if i want to write my particular integral in this form i'm just going to call it beta which is beta is a constant times e raised to the power negative x if i actually had maybe this exact form as part of my complementary function then my particular integral i will i will move to the next trial which i'm going to get by multiplying this um term here with an x so i'm going to get beta x e raised to the power negative x but since i can't find it here i just go with the first trial method now um we know that um the getting y differentiating this guy we get negative beta e raised to the power negative x differentiating the second time we get beta e raised to the power negative x but why are we even differentiating it's simply because if this system is referred to as e then in all cases my particular integral always satisfy the differential equation represented as e so with that i will simply replace y here with y of p and i get this equation now that is why i differentiated i have y y of p double prime i have y of p prime so replacing it in um, replacing y of p double prime by b e, e raised to the power negative x y of p prime by negative b e raised to the power negative x and y of p by b e raised to the power negative x and equating to this we get this equation from there um, this is b e raised to the power negative x plus this is um, 6b e raised to the power negative x that is 7b e raised to the power negative x then minus 5b e raised to the power negative x it gives us 2b e raised to the power negative x to be equal to this um, we now equate the corresponding entries of e raised to the power negative x means 2, 2 beta so we not be 2 beta is equal to 2 meaning that beta is equal to 1 from there we get our particular integral to be e raised to the power negative x since our value of beta is 1 and we are done now the last part that is c we are going to solve for the general solution which is simply summing the complementary function and the particular integral together it means our complementary function is this and our particular integral is this so summing them together we get this and then we precise that our a and b are in the set of real numbers so that was that for the question like share like the video share to your friends and subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed see you in the next video